So um, I might be screwing myself over by doing this, but in the last part of this video, I give away one of my biggest strategic uh, plays. And for the people that play me a lot, please don't watch it. So thank you. Hey guys, so today I want to talk about something that goes beyond the scope of just like textbook playing patterns such as uh, two forehands inside out and then one forehand inside in or what to do off a certain shot, how to reply to a certain shot with a certain other type of shot. Because a lot of things, um, patterns are good because they give you some sort of familiarity and then you can practice these things but you don't want to be locked into them. and Yes, you want to play percentages for you winning the point, but sometimes the highest percentage pattern is not the highest percentage way you're going to beat a certain opponent. So you're going to have to learn to adapt. And a lot of patterns that become prominent in whatever uh, skill level of tennis, it's this is how it's going to work. Um, people are going to start playing against that pattern a lot, and eventually they're going to learn how to one-up it, and they're just going to keep one-upping each other until the end. So learn about, you know, I want to talk about how to adjust, how to, yes, keep your fundamentals, but then apply them in a way that's not, that maybe goes past what the textbook thing to do is. So here we go. So let's start by talking about what offense means to me, right? I think I consider anything that makes your opponent uncomfortable offense. It doesn't have to be a certain speed. It doesn't have to be a certain shot selection. Say, I can still give my opponent the chance to attack, but if that's what I wanted, I'm still technically on offense because it was all part of my plan, right? Strategy is offense. Strategizing is offense and reacting is defense. So let's say, um, let's say I hit a short ball. Yes, I gave my opponent the time to come to the net, but if I wanted them to hit that short ball and dig upwards, I'm still on offense the next shot, I believe. Right. So let's talk about a scenario, and this is just an example, but it's also a different way to think about how to make your opponent uncomfortable rather than just hitting, like getting them out of position and then pressuring them with hard shots left and right, open court, or behind them. Um, let's talk about, let's think about this. So here's a scenario. I hit a forehand from the middle of the court inside out to my opponent's backhand and it it got them really out wide and now they're scrambling t to come back into the court. Now I get another forehand and I have several choices, right? Um, the most obvious one being open court, um, rip it, open court and hope they they, you know, that they can't get it due to position, due to the speed of my shot, due to whatever, okay? But that's not always the way to go because a lot of people will know that that, well, a large percentage of people will realize that is probably the next shot that's coming and at a high level, a lot of people have really good running forehands. So here are a couple of other options that you might not have thought of. Uh, when I have somebody really on the run and rushed, I sometimes opt to hit not a fast ball behind them, but a slow, like a, a slow angle back at where, the point where they came from. Because now they have to adjust their mindset from I'm scrambling and I'm ready to hit this in this running forehand to like, oh wait, he hit like an off quality, kind of off tempo, slow spin ball that's now short to the point that I was running from. Now he has to turn his body and adjust his body at an angle that's not just just going right back to the point. He has to adjust his body at an angle forward. And yes, I'm giving him the chance to hit a short backhand, but most likely he's not comfortable. And even if he manages to get a good hit on it, I'll be ready for the next shot, and then his court really will be open where he can't um, he can't do much, right? So sometimes I do this weird, uh, this short forehand, like short spin thing down the line, which doesn't even look like a quality shot and is kind of slow, but it 
messes with their footwork, it messes with their rhythm because that's not how the flow of the match was going for him. And especially during a point when something, when all the evidence goes to your opponent hitting one shot, stuff that, stuff that kind of, like, stuff that exceeds that expectation really bothers people. And during a point, it's really hard to to silently switch mindsets. But the best players are able to adjust, and that's why they're the best players, right? But plans like this, they, they work really well. Um, another example is, let's say, the exact same scenario, where instead of hitting open court, when they're running back, I just aim the ball straight deep at their feet. So they have to break all of a sudden, get their feet out of the way, and kind of, you know, kind of like punt it back. And that might give me an even shorter ball, where it doesn't even matter where they're on the court anymore because they just hit such a short shot that I can just smack the next one wherever I want. So think about turning your opponent, what, they, what they're not expecting. Of course, keep it in the realm of, like, your, your shot percentage should still be decent. If you're able to make the shot over and over, uh, that's obviously the best. A lot of people really like to get into this trap of they they look at plays and, and playing patterns where it's like every time I get this ball I'm going to hit this ball. But if someone realizes that, then you're kind of in trouble because it's so easy to prepare for a shot that you know is coming even if it's a higher quality shot. And there are some situations where you should hit a high percentage ball because as long as you hit that ball like they just can't get to it they're not fast enough you've pulled them off the court enough for you to hit that shot and win the point right out like you should always take those if there's a point to be taken just take it don't don't get too creative there but really consider what i was talking about before because over the course of a match the guy start has to think all of a sudden to cover all the options um, it's not just in the beginning of the match you hit a lot of winners because Higher level players, they will start realizing what your patterns are. They will adapt to your speed or your your rhythm, right? So tennis is not so simple. And textbook things are not always the best way to go, even though they may be higher percentage. Because you want to think about textbook plays and fundamentals as an outline that you adjust your game off of. Instead of just, instead of like, something that kind of binds you to playing only a, only one way, one or two ways, okay? So let's move on to the next thing I want to talk about. Okay, so now I'm going to reveal one of the, one of my main things, one of my main plays that I like to defend a certain situation with. So like I talked about before, um, a lot of high-level men's tennis is taking control of the point from the ad side with the forehand. Right. And I try to hit shots in the beginning of a point that allow me to cheat to that side because all percentages point to them more likely trying to go ad court so I can run around and hit forehands. And I leave my deuce court open and I usually like the shots I hit will be if, if they choose to try to go deuce court, it's a lower percentage shot for them and I'll get some points that way. But let's let's go back to me hitting like after I get to after I get to the ad side, right, and I'm hitting forehands. Let's say I play somebody that's good enough to where I hit big forehand to his backhand. His backhand is his strength and he's able to crush balls past my forehand where I can't get around it and I have to hit a backhand. He's able to pressure me that way, right? Um, so this is this is something where my strategy will go away from a textbook understanding of geometry of tennis but I will explain why and just this this one strategy it's it's gonna help you maybe think about tennis in a different way um, I hit if they are able to get to my backhand I do not hit a defensive shot cross court if I'm really trying to win and not just work on my backhand cross court defense I will oftentimes slice that ball down the line and a lot of people are going to ask why are you slicing the ball down the line to the guy's forehand and opening the court up for them to hit cross court on you right because 99 percent of shots if i slice down the line they're glooping they're hitting topspin forehand cross court and making me run but that's exactly it 
99% of shots are going to go cross court to my forehand. And let's think about what type of shot the slice is. You can hit a good slice where they can't just obliterate the ball and it still gives you time because a slice will travel a little bit slower and but it'll stay it'll stay low so me knowing this how people react to down the line slices 99 percent of the time i'm already going to be ready to hit a running forehand which i would much rather do than get pinned to the backhand side and possibly get into a cross court war with a guy whose backhand was able to hit wider than my inside out forehand or maybe hit hit a backhand cross court back to where he can get inside out and crush that ball because he just hit an offensive backhand so my preference is to reset the point in some way to where i'm getting a i'm getting a forehand to reset the point with instead of uh, getting my backhand to maybe try to get control of the point again um, that was really wordy, but really think about it. Replay it if you have to, because this is a thought process, and this is important for people to to learn. Just another way of thinking that's not that supersedes what textbooks or you know basic patterns will tell you. Um, let's go back to. Hey, let's think about this. Right, it's really easy to. It's a lot easier to prepare when you know what's coming which was what I was talking about in the first part, where um, making opponents uncomfortable, it's not always hitting the shot hard, or behind them, or whatever, or um, where they're to the open court, hitting a winner. It's sometimes exceeding their expectations of what's actually going to come for the next shot. And this is, and I'm using this on, on defense as well. I'm, I'm playing a point where it will make it very obvious for me to tell where the next ball is going to come. So it's not always me reading exactly what they're going to do, but it's me guiding what they're going to do with my own shots. And that's very important for people to learn because it will cut down drastically your, um, your energy usage when covering the court. And it's also going to expand the strategies that you have. So now that I've given you that part of my game. Uh, the people that play against me daily and watch my content, please don't use this against me. Pretend that you didn't watch the video. Uh, don't hit it back down the line to my backhand after I slice. Or if you can't do a high percentage, that's fine. You can try and you can miss a lot of balls. But if you are good at returning it down the line back to my backhand, then then I'm in trouble. But the key here is actually if he reads me like that and he knows that I'm just, I'm subconsciously going all the way to my forehand, getting ready to hit a running forehand, because my momentum will be shifted so much to the deuce side, they don't even have to hit a ball that well back to the spot where I sliced. And I will be getting a backhand and probably an off balance one because they exceeded my 99% prediction, right? So it all comes back to here. Uh, I really hope you guys learned some stuff, learned some high IQ big brain plays. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I gave away one of my secrets. So I think I deserve a subscription. And if you hate me after that, you can un unsubscribe. It's a, free, it's a free world. Freedom. Anyway, have a good day as always and peace out.